Hello and welcome to another video. This time we're going to talk about wands. I'm pretty sure you might have seen the top 10 Harry Potter wands video. This time we're just going to talk about wands. And in reality, <clears throat> it's possible that you actually can not measure a wand's power. However, we do know some information about wands, so that's what that's what we're going to talk about. Now, now the two most famous wand makers in Harry Potter is Garrick Ollivander and Michael Gregorovich. Now. Ollivander comes from the Ollivander family, which all, which most of them dedicated their life to crafting their wands. Now, generally, what the wood and core is made of determines what the wands like. For example, ash basically always sticks to their owner. And also, elder goes easily from one wizard to another while it's more powerful than most other woods. While ash is weaker than most woods, but is more loyal than most other woods. And the three most common cores, unicorn hairs, <coughs> unicorn hairs generally produces the most consistent magic and is least subject to fluctuations and blockages. Wands with unicorn cores are generally the most difficult to turn to the dark arts. They are the most faithful of all wands and usually remain strongly attached to their first owner, irrespective of whether he or she was an accomplished witch or, or wizard. Minor disadvantages of unicorn here are that they do not make the most powerful wands, although the wand would make common state. <clears throat> and they are prone to melancholy if seriously mishandled, meaning that the hair may die and need replacing. Dragon heart string cores are basically the opposites of unicorn hairs, and phoenix feather cores are basically the middle, and Vila hair, the wand maker Garrick Ollivander mentioned that he did not use Vila hair because it made for temperamental wands. The short tail hair. This core type is regarded as an unstable, if not difficult, substance to use in wand making. That means it's not easy to use in wands and is possibly and probably very powerful. I mean, the elder wand has a Thestral Tail Hair Core, and it's not loyal, which means that it's likely powerful. Troll, whisker, troll Whiskers is considered an inferior substance to Garrick Ollivander's Three Supreme Cores. If you don't know, the Three Supreme Cores are the first three ones I talked about. Now, Kelpie Hair, early in my career, as I watched my wand maker father wrestling with substandard wand core material such as Kelpie Hair, okay? Thunderbird tail feathers. These act of their own accord. Wampus cat feather. Okay, we're just going to pass all of them except for basilisk ones. The only one wand is known to have used this core. It was made by one of the founders that it's a Slytherin. Salazar Slytherin.
Will and a Ravenclaw, I'm not sure. Godra Gryffindor, okay, I do not know. And Helga Hufflepuff, still do not know. Long lengths and flexibility. Now, long lengths, many wand makers simply match the long length to the size of the witch or wizard who will use it. Like, think about Hagrid. He has the longest wand in the Harry Potter universe, even longer than Draco's mouth, Draco Malfoy's, and is the biggest character in the Harry Potter world, except for Madame Maxime. And Umbridge, she's quite a short person and had the shortest wand in the Harry Potter universe. <clears throat> but, in all of Andrew's opinion, that is not true. It You can't match it to the height of the size of the witch or wizard, but its personalities. For example, long wands tend to stick with people who have big personalities. For example, Hagrid has a big heart and also is very excited. Big personalities. Umbridge lacks a lot of empathy, which is the opposite of big personalities. She has small personalities, which makes it so that <clears throat> her wand is very short. Now, the wand can choose new alliances. alliances. For example, when... Harry takes Draco's wand, it becomes his and works w more well for him than usual. And that was the reason why in the Battle of the Seven Potters, Harry won against Voldemort. Lucius's wand doesn't work For him, he was given the wand. He never actually defeated him or anything. And now let's talk about the known wands. Albus Dumbledore's wand has an elder wood, is made of elder wood, and the Thestral Tail Hair Core. If you're asking, hey, what's his first wand's material? We don't know, and but, in my opinion, it's a Thestral Tail Hair Core, and the wood is ebony, is probably ebony, which is suited for transfiguration. That was what he was teaching, and is one of the most excellent things he was at. Although, yeah, he's basically excellent of everything. Any anyways, Minerva McGonagall's wand. Hmm. Minerva McGonagall has fir wood and <clears throat> has a dragon heart string core. Neville Longbottom <clears throat> has a wand of cherry and has a unicorn hair core. Okay, Remus Lupin's wand. Okay, and I'm going to talk about every one other <coughs> wizard. I mean, def D A D A teachers. Remus Lupin's wand has a cypress wood and a unicorn hair core. Quintinus Curl has outer wood wand and is quite Bendy and also has a unicorn hair core. Cool. 
those two I'm going to talk about, and lastly, I'm going to talk about Severus Snape's wand. Severus Snape's wand, actually, yeah, it's a gnome, so I'm going to talk about <clears throat> the head of Ravenclaw's wand. Now, I'll find it as quick as I can. Okay. Phileas Flitwick's wand. This wand has an unknown. Okay, that's not what I expected. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe, and bye!